in this there is the example of Hajar alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam married her after Asya alayhi salam, after Sarah alayhi salam gave her as a gift to her husband Ibrahim alayhi salam to marry when she, he couldn't have any children. And Allah gave him a child from this woman. She was a servant of Sarah and she gifted her to him because she was very old. And Hajar alayhi salam was young. And Allah gifted him a child from her by the name of Ismail alayhi salam, another prophet. He was his only child. And, uh, and Ibrahim alayhi salam was over 80 years old. And he was actually very old. He looked old and he was old. And Allah gave him that child after he had longed for him. And he was a boy and Allah made him a prophet. And then suddenly one day, Ibrahim alayhi salam receives a command that he has to take his wife Hajar and his only newborn son Ismail alayhi salam into the middle of a desert, which we now know is Mecca. At those days, there was nothing there. There was no water, no people, nothing. You know the story. To leave them in the middle of the desert and to return without them. Just like that. No sources, no people, no food. Leave them there and come back. And so he went on that journey. Note, Hajar alayhi salam knew nothing about it. All she knew was that they were going on a journey and they're going to come back home. But also note, my dear sisters, how she was obedient and loyal to her husband. Trust between the husband and the wife. He's a prophet of God and she is obeying him, putting her trust and loyalty in Allah than his, her husband. So they went and when they reached the middle of the desert, they sat down and Ibrahim alayhi salam stood up and he started to walk back to Palestine. And he did not ask his wife to follow. So she chased after him. Ya Ibrahim, ila man tatrukana? Who are you leaving us to? There's no one with us. What are you doing? And Ibrahim alayhi salam would not reply to her. Why? Because if he replies, we'll get into a conversation. And he is afraid that his heart may lose itself. He has to fulfill the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has a plan. He just kept walking straight without looking at her. And she kept on following him. Ya Ibrahim, ila man tatrukana? Who are you leaving us to? And he would not reply. He just kept walking. Finally, Hajar alayhi salam stopped for a minute and thought. With her piety, with her righteousness, with her knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she asked one simple question. Ya Ibrahim, Allahu amaraka bihada. Is it Allah who commanded you to do this? And Ibrahim alayhi salam, still without looking at her, he replied in only one answer. He said, Naam, yes. And he kept walking. At this point, Hajar alayhi salam stopped and she watched her husband walk away. She calmed down and she said the following words. Therefore, Allah will not let us go. Allah will not lose us. I want you to put yourself in that position. To us, it's an imagination. It's just a story. But imagine you were really there and it is you. The woman who her husband is commanded to leave her right there in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. There are obviously many men who can't even do what Hajar alayhi salam did. Which man can do that? We are talking about women. Which man can do that? She had the power of a hundred men at that time at heart. She said, Allah. Allah will not lose us. Such reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why would she not be one of those of paradise? This is a perfect example. Allah. Allah will not lose us. And you know the story. She began to run between Safa and Marwa when the food ran out and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them water called Ma' Zamzam. And a whole village came and lived around them. And Ismail alayhi salam grew and Hajar alayhi salam lived among these people. And they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed it for them not only to be looked after, but to also grow a whole city, a whole city, a new tribe, which never existed before. And it lasted out of her honor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored her in the Quran and honored her till today. Millions of Muslims around the world go, men 
and women to carry out the ritual of a woman. One woman. What do we do? We actually hurry between Safa and Marwa. What is it? It's walking and hurrying between Safa and Marwa. Why? Just because of one woman. Now, who would you want to be honored by? The fashion industry? The media? Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Oh men, who do you want to be honored by? Your business at work? Be promoted a little bit? Okay, be promoted. But which one do you yearn for mostly? Compare. Is there any comparison between being honored by a human, by a man, or being honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There is absolutely no comparison. And here is Hajar alayhi salam, one of the best examples, not only for the women, but for the men before the women.